Hi, welcome everybody. I'm Dr. Khaled Sadek. For those of you who are watching live, you know what this is about. For those of you who are watching on the repeat, I'm Dr. Khaled Sadek and every Wednesday I run a virtual medical clinic, a global virtual clinic, where we discuss a whole host of topics. Today's topic being seasonal affective disorder. So if you've been affected by sleep disturbance or as the clocks change uh, back an hour as we enter the winter months and you're finding that your mood is dropping a little bit, that your motivation has changed or that you put on weight during winter. If you describe yourself as having a winter self and a summer self and you're looking for answers, then you've come to the right place. So in today's discussion, we're going to be talking about seasonal affective disorder, especially in the context of corona uh, virus that's also pending. So if you want to know what SAD is, we're going to be answering that. If you want to know how uh, your sleep changes in winter, we'll be answering that as well. If you want to know how to diagnose seasonal affective disorder, then we'll be doing that. If uh, you want to know who's at risk, you know, do you think you don't quite have it? or you're concerned that you may develop it, you want to know who's at risk, we're going to take questions, we're going to answer that as well. Uh, we'll also be covering the importance of sleep. As you know, I've done a lot of research on sleep. We've published many, many papers on sleep biology. So we're going to go into the biomechanics of sleep as well and how that relates to seasonal affective disorder. We'll also be talking about light boxes and how to treat seasonal affective disorder. Uh, and uh, at the end of the show, We'll take questions from the audience and uh, we'll round off by saying a bunch of hellos. We won't go too long. We'll aim for a 20-minute discussion. And uh, with no further delay, let's crack on. So seasonal affective disorder, what is it? What does it mean? Well, the clocks have gone back in the United Kingdom and they will probably go back very, very shortly if they haven't already done so across uh, the United States and other parts of the country. What this means for us is that the daylight hours are now shrinking. We're moving away from the equinox and the daylight hours are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. More recently, we've discovered a new disorder called seasonal affective disorder. What does that mean? Well, by seasonal, it's uh, relapsing and remitting, as in it comes and goes with the seasons, in particular the winter months. Affective meaning it changes the way you are, the way you appear to others, your affect. So in this context, people with seasonal affective disorder will describe having a low mood. They'll describe a lack of motivation. They'll describe their being in bed a lot. Um, they'll also describe that they're craving for carbohydrate. So if any of those sound true to you, then you may be suffering from seasonal affective disorder. How is this possible, you will ask? Well, for answers, we have to look at the circadian biology behind sleep. Now, human life has adapted on planet Earth. I've got here a wonderful globe of the Earth. But of course, the Earth is rotating on its axis, but also around the orbit of the Sun. Now, it's been doing that for billions and billions of years. And as a result, everything, everything on this planet depends on that great big light box in the sky, the Sun. From flowers, which blossom in the summer, will open their petals up in the sunshine and close it by night to nocturnal animals, to human beings. Our whole body has managed to develop a physiology based around what we now know as the day-night cycle. That's 12 hours of day, 12 hours of night. Our eyes are a window into the brain for light. Light hits the back of the eye and it feeds into the brain and inside your brain, in a special part of the brain called the suprachiasmic nucleus, lies a grandfather clock and that grandfather clock synchronizes the entire body accordingly. We know that certain physiological processes like your blood pressure, your metabolism, your sleep habits all have a circadian pattern. So they will increase by uh, the day and then they will turn down by night. Enzymes will shut down. Okay, so if the body experiences a change in that in that light period, what in medicine we describe as periodicity, a change or a decrease in the daylight uh, time, 
then our brain will interpret that as being a change in our environment. For the large majority of us, we'll just crack on. We'll just we'll just do what we normally do. But for a small number of people, about 4%, they will actually start to have physiological changes. A lot of people, if you have any seasonal effect disorder, put it in the chat box. We'll have a look at those questions uh, shortly and go through those as well. So anyone with um, symptoms of seasonal affective disorder, I want to hear about it. So how do we go about diagnosing seasonal affective disorder? Well, there isn't a test. There isn't a test like you would do a blood test or a chest x-ray. We go by the symptoms, what people describe. And the four cardinal features are that it's seasonal, so that it's got a relapsing and remitting feature in that you're great in the summer, you've got your summer personality, but by winter you take a step down and you've got your, your, your winter personality. So unlike the usual mental health disorders like depression, which is throughout the seasons, this particular condition changes. So in the summertime you're happy, in the wintertime you're not happy, while if we look at mental health in general, it's just uh, the affect is reduced throughout the year. So number one, it's seasonal. So do you have a change in your mood with the seasons? Number two, we have some what we describe as atypical features of uh, mental health. In mental health, we have certain features that we know are absolutely typical. They happen almost with every mental condition. And of those are people who lose their appetite, people who uh, sleep not enough, uh, people who lose weight, uh, but in, in seasonal affective disorder, what we're seeing is the um, there is an increase in sleep. So there's something what we call hypersomnia. So people actually have a propensity to want to sleep more. It's not like they can't uh, get sleep. They're actually sleeping a lot more. And as opposed to getting a reduction in their appetite, they're actually craving certain food types. In particular, they're, they're, they're craving... Um, <clears throat> carbohydrates, so they get this carb craving, and then they get the, the the normal typical features, which are the lack of motivation, the reduced energy, the reduced socialize, socialization. So there are some atypical features, and there are some typical features. Okay, so there isn't a test, but there are certain um, features that we kind of clump together, and from those we can go on and say, look, this sounds like seasonal affective disorder. So who's at risk? Well, to be honest with you, it's going to be uh, individuals who are going to be at risk of mental health in general. So if you're suffering from anxiety or borderline low mood, then a change in the seasons may be enough to trigger it. Okay, so everybody feels a little bit of um, change in their mood when the clocks go back, but often you're able to function, you know, you're able to go about doing your daily uh, chores, but in a small group of people, that step down, that change in fun in their seasons, will result in a change in function, which can affect them long term. So, what is the importance of sleep, and how do we get more of it? Well, listen, I've spoken many, many times on one of my favourite topics, which is sleep hygiene. That's to say, what is it that helps you go to sleep? What can you do to make yourself feel more refreshed in the morning? Now, I have a lot of patients who come and say, listen, doc, I'm not sleeping very well. I'm not waking up refreshed. I'm very, very tired. What can you do? So for those cases, what I suggest is a course of sleep hygiene. And sleep hygiene really starts almost the day before. So 1 p.m. before you go to sleep in the afternoon, that's when you should be start thinking about what it is you're doing that can 